Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Um, um, in this video, we're going to do the bench test. Um, going to go over basically setting up Windows 10, making sure it's ready for the CNC PC, and uh, installing the software, and then loading the software and testing communications with uh, the Acorn board. The reason why you want to do this is you want to make sure that you can establish communications with the uh, Acorn board with your PC. Um, before we get started, make sure that your PC meets the minimum software and hardware requirements for the Centroid Acorn system. Um, it's very important. Um, it's not advisable that you use a laptop uh, because of the power saving features involved in uh, laptop systems, um, though there are users that have used them. So if you've got one and you want to try it, fine. I wouldn't recommend going out to buy a laptop uh, for running your CNC piece, your CNC Acorn. Um, what I have here is the uh, the back panel. Everything's all laid out. Nothing is wired yet, as you can see. Uh, here's here's the Acorn board. Okay, here's my DC multimeter. It's wired to the Acorn spindle uh, analog output. Uh, red lead is going to the the terminal closest to BeagleBone Green, that's uh, V out, and then the black lead is going to common. Um, I suggest you get yourself a good meter. Um, these flukes, this is a, a really good fluke meter, but you can buy these fluke digital multimeters for about $50, $60 on Amazon, and I think you want a really good meter for testing uh, something you can rely on. So that's the, uh, the meter connected to the spin analog outputs. Um, you'll see that I have the power supply connector uh, plugged into Acorn. Here's the Acorn power supply. And uh, black is to COM. This comes pre-wired from Centroid, but black is to COM, yellow is to V2, green is to uh, chassis ground, and white's to neutral, and black is to line. So you might want to verify that those are connected correctly. This is the Ethernet cable that came with Acorn. I suggest you bench test with it. Um, it is a shielded cable, and one of the telltale signs you can see is a metal jacket around the RJ45 connector. That's a telltale sign of a shielded Ethernet cable. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. All right, so our Acorn's ready to go. Again, there's nothing wired up, and that's the way we want it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, power up my meter here, have it ready to go. Here's my CNC PC. It happens to be a Lenovo M92P Tiny. Um, it's an i5 running at 2.9 gigahertz. It's equipped with 120 gigabyte solid state drive and it has Windows 10 on it. And then I use these uh, Logitech K400 Plus you can get these off of Amazon with the skin and all for about $35. And the nice thing is it's got touch pads, so Swarf doesn't really get caught in there. It could get caught in the buttons up here, um, but uh, they've been pretty good to me, so I just continue to use them. And they are wireless, so you can, you know, not stuck to a cord or whatever, but they work well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the bench test. Also, Centroid recently uh, released a bench test video that you might want to take a look at. I'm going to be covering basically the same thing. The only thing I'm going to add to this is we are going to check the spindle analog output using the DC meter to make sure that it's outputting the proper voltages using the uh, NC file that uh, Centroid includes in the uh, software package. Okay, I've got my Acorn powered up. Obviously, I've got my Ethernet cable connected. I've got my power uh, connected and my DC meter plugged in and connected. And uh, one of the things I want to call your attention to is you'll see the heartbeat blinking right here, about one pulse a second. Uh, when Acorn is first powered up, it blinks rapidly, and then once it's booted, it'll bl blink at about one pulse per second. So you have the LED here, and then up in the corner of uh, Acorn, there's also an LED that's changing colors. It's going from, uh, from uh, green to red when that uh, heartbeat is blinking, as you can see here. Let's get on with setting up Windows 10 and loading the software and doing our bench test. 
Okay, before we get started with uh, setting up Windows 10, I do want to make sure that your Acorn is powered up. You have your Ethernet plugged into Acorn. You have your Ethernet cable plugged into the back of your CNC PC. That's critical for the software installation process. So uh, what we want to do now is we want to get Win Windows 10, uh, the CNC PC, set up uh, specifically for um, the CNC 12 software and for running your machine. All right, so I like doing things from the control panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the control panel. Uh, I'm going to pin it to the taskbar. So you see I'm in the search box. I'm going to type control. And there you see control panel. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to pin it to the taskbar. Okay. Okay, we've got our control panel uh, set here in the taskbar. I want to go really quickly over to settings and we're going to do to go to time and language and we're going to set time automatically to off. All right, so now we're going to uh, make sure that um, you're set to administrator. You have to have administrator settings here. So let's click on control panel, user accounts, change account type. And you'll see it's already set local CNC PC local account administrator. You want to change it. If yours doesn't say administrator, you click on change your account type. And you'll want to check it, change it. You'll want to change it from standard to administrator. So we're good there. We'll go back to control panel. Now we're going to go to system and security. And we're going to security and maintenance. And we're going to go over here to change security and maintenance settings. And we're going to uncheck all these notification boxes. So they don't pop up messages while you're running a job. The grayed out ones you can't do anything about, but the rest of this you can uh, turn them off. Okay, they're all unchecked. We click OK. Now we're going to go to Change User Account and Control Settings. That's right here. Change User Account and Control Settings. We're going to drop the slider bar to the bottom. So you left click and then pull it down. We'll click OK. And we'll tell Windows, yes, that's OK. Now we're going to System and Security. Let's go back up here. We'll click on it. And now we're going to go to Power Options. And High Performance, we're going to change the plan settings. We're going to go ahead and uh, turn off the display. We're going to change it to Never. Now we're going to change Advanced Power Settings. Now up here where it says turn hard disk, turn off hard disk after, we're going to change those to zero. Zero. And we're going to go to wireless adapter settings. Make sure that's set to uh, maximum performance, which it is. We're going to go to sleep. Sleep after. We're going to make sure it's set to never. So if it's uh, anything but, you change it to a zero. Allow hybrid sleep. We're going to turn it off. So we click on it. Off. And uh, we'll go to hibernate after. Never is what it should be set to. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, allow wake timers. Um, let's turn that to, uh, to disable. USB settings. Scroll down a little bit more. We're going to check that. Suspended USB selective suspend setting. We're going to change that to disabled. And we're going to go down a little further. We're going to go to display. Turn off display after. Click on the little plus setting. And we're going to change that to zero. And now we're going to hit apply. That's the last setting that we need to worry about. Click Apply, click OK, and that takes care of setting up Windows 10. Now, you want to go to the Centroid website and download the latest version of software uh, that's available. So I've already downloaded the zip file. It's up here. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to extract all. I'm going to set 
accept the default, created a folder, and the folder now opens. We're going to click Setup. And we'll have to close this window to be able to see. I've started it. There it is right there. Now it's hiding behind this window. So we'll click X. And we click Agree. Now you have two options. Install Desktop Shortcuts, which I'm going to do. Or you can start CNC 12 at startup. Some people wonder what that means. That means after Windows 10 boots, it will automatically start CNC 12 if you choose Start CNC 12 at startup. Uh, most people just want it to go to the Windows desktop and then you manually start it. But if you have a machine and that's all it does and you want it to go from Windows 10 boot to CNC 12, then you would check this now. Um, you can change it uh, later on. There's a start.bat file in the CNC M or CNC T directory. But I'm going to go with install the desktop shortcuts. I'm doing lathe. So I check lathe and we click next. I'm imperial inches. Do the install. Click next. Okay, here's where it's important to make sure you have that Ethernet cable needed to be plugged into the PC and Acorn, and Acorn needed to be power up, or you won't be able to complete this section. Click on the down arrow, and you'll see there are two options Wi Fi, which this computer has Wi-Fi and we're not going to change its Ethernet address and then there's Ethernet. That's the one we want to change. So we're going to click on that. It says, would you like to change the IP address for Ethernet to 10.168.41.1? Um, that's a yes. And once that's done, you can't use that Ethernet port for anything but communicating with uh, Centroid Acorn. Uh, it sets that static IP address. It's fixed. So we say yes. Successfully set the Ethernet adapter. We click OK and we click Finish. And now we should be able to start CNC 12. So we're going to double click on CNC 12 lathe. And at this, we're going to say Private Networks. We're going to click on it real quick and Public. And we're going to allow access. This is allowing CNC 12 to work through uh, Windows Defender. So when you see that box, check it. Um, more often than not, uh, the, the issues with that not being able to uh, communicate with Acorn, as you see here, we're up, CNC 12 is up. But if you get a, 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 an error message and it bombs out and it goes back to the desktop, it's probably because you have Windows Defender turned on and you didn't allow the CNCM or the CNCT.exe through Windows Defender. Um, you can turn Windows Defender off. And in fact, Centroid, in their setup video, they ask you to do that. So I'll show you. Here's the, I, I'm in the, in the taskbar. There's a little up arrow. You click on it. And then here's the Windows Defender Shield. You can click on that. And we're not going to do any of this stuff right now. Firewall Network Protection. Firewall is on. Firewall is on. Um, you, can, you can turn this stuff off firewall defender off um, so you would have to turn that off and then you may be able to get to restart CNC 12 but if you do what I told you when you saw that message box that popped up when we started CNC 12 click on both boxes and allow CNCM through it and now you don't have to disable Windows Defender it will always let CNC 12 run with Windows Defender on okay this right here, this is a CNC 12 screen. So that means we've established communications with uh, Centroid Acorn, which is good. So we've done the first part of the bench test, which is establishing communications between the CNC 12 PC and Acorn. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, wizard. I clicked on, back up a little bit. So I clicked on utility and clicked on the wizard. Just a quick tour. This is where you're going to set everything up. Eventually, we'll be working with this, and we're going to stop from the top all the way down. All right. So uh, just wanted to show you where the wizard was. It's F7 Utilities and then F10 uh, Wizard. All right. So the next step is we want to test the spindle output. Turning my DC meter on, and it is on. Now we want to test the spindle analog output. The spindle analog output controls your spindle drive. Usually it's a variable frequency drive. 
Um, it's important to note that there is no closed loop control of spindle speed. It's just uh, it's just sending out a zero to ten volt uh, output and uh, controlling your VFD. All right. Anyway, so let's go ahead and click reset. You'll notice here it says reset tripped and the dialog box right here says reset initiated press reset to clear but let's go ahead and reset all right now reset it says reset cleared now what we want to do is we want to load the spindle bench test file so we click on F2 load and here it is right here spindle bench test I'm gonna click on it to load it click open you'll look up here at the top it's a spindle bench test CNC in the job name so it's loaded we're going to go ahead and press cycle start to set the machine home position. Um, we don't have switches or anything like that, but we're, while we're in the bench test mode, it's set to it defaults to simple home, which means wherever the axes are, that's where home's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and press cycle start. Machine home set. Now what we're going to do is press cycle start to start the job, and we're going to follow the on-screen prompts. And if you get a blank screen like this, just hit the escape key one time and here's the utility make sure you have a DVM and a copy of the installation manual on hand press cycle start to continue so I'm gonna hit cycle start now it says voltage reading number one s500 enter the voltage BDC read between the spindle analog and spindle analog com press cycle start to continue my my meter reads 1.7 volts so we'll enter 1.7 and hit cycle start now it says the same thing there's it says enter the voltage bdc re read between spindle analog and spindle analog com press cycle start to continue here's what i'm getting now 3.38 so go 3.38 we press cycle start and here's the next one voltage reading number three enter the voltage DC red between spindle analog and spindle analog com press cycle start to continue and here is the uh, voltage 6.74 6.74 and we're going to do it press cycle start to continue and then reading number four, S3000. Enter the voltage DC read between spindle analog and spindle analog com. Press cycle start to continue. And here's that voltage 10.11. 10.11. Press cycle start to continue. And uh, everything looks good. If there was an error, it would have shown itself, it would have told you there was an error. And keep in mind, the default uh, spindle speed setting in the wizard is 3,000, from 0 to 3,000. And to run this test, that's the way it has to be set. So if you change that in the future, um, or you want to run the spindle bench test, again, you need to make sure it's set 0 to 3,000.